Hi, everybody. Uh, after some time, I have come to you with uh, a new uh, presentation about uh, how to read a normal head CT. In the past lectures, I talked about how to read a normal head uh, CT scan. And uh, then I talked about pathological CT scan. Now today, I'm going to talk about how to read a normal head MRI. I'm Basant Pan from Annapurna Neurological Institute. Uh, I don't want to go into detail of uh, the mechanics of MRI. Uh, MRI will have, uh, basically it will have a magnetic gradient coils, magnet gradient coils, and uh, there will be a radio frequency coils. So with the, uh, when the patient is uh, magnetized, their you know, tissue, the protons in their tissue, which is directing, you know, rap, hap, haphazardly will uh, be directed in one line. So the, it's magnetized, that part of the tissue that is activated is magnetized. And then uh, there's a spin there, uh, nuclear spin. And then the magnet is released. And with the relaxation time and activation time, um, you can, you know, make different images like T1, T2, flare, diffusion with it, and so on and so forth. But today I'm not going to talk, uh, I'm just going to talk about how to read a normal MRI, head MRI. So I will not talk about these things. And we need to be careful that, you know, whenever we go into a magnetic suit, uh, this MRI suit, then uh, a patient with pacemaker should not go in and it's very strongly magnetized. So, you know, you, uh, with a strong magnetic uh, structures can be sucked in. So we have to be careful uh, when we go in a magnetic field, remove all the magnetic uh, elements and those with pacemaker should not be allowed to go in the uh, MRI suit. Well, having said that, uh, MRI is uh, taken through a baseline that is created from the inferior wall of the orbit to the external auditory meatus on X-ray. When you cut that on uh, MRI, then approximately that will be from the middle of the uh, pituitary gland into the posterior aspect of the tentorium. So that will be the reach baseline. And then, you know, parallel to the baseline above and below, uh, we got uh, continuously. Uh, I am not going to talk about the detail of different techniques that can be done by uh, MRI, like in this case, this is a, a brainstem glima where uh, we have done a DTI image to see where the corticospinal tract is going so that we don't, we want to avoid that part, but then, you know, this will, I will talk about this in my future lectures. And there are a lot of fascicles, the connecting pathways, which you can um, actually, you know, um, detect on MRI, uh, on a modern, uh, good MRI with good software, but this is also out of scope of today's lecture. And um, Human Connectome Project has connected almost all, you know, major uh, brain nucleus. And um, uh, uh, you, we can study about this in our future lectures. Uh, Yamara has advanced in such a way that now it has, you know, gone into uh, evaluating psychiatric problems like um, depression, sometimes schizophrenia, and, um, you know, this is a PET scan. And uh, so, you know, MRI is trying to uh, study all these things by resting functional MRI, fMRI, which will not be the scope of this lecture today. MRI also can be used to study the uh, cerebral blood volume, blood flow, you know, the perfusion of the brain itself, either by uh, contrast or without a contrast, but you can see you know, ischemic area, but uh, today we don't talk about this as well. And also about, uh, you know, functional MRI uh, by bold techniques, you can detect uh, the Broca's area when you ask the patient to speak or Wernicke's area uh, and relation of Wernicke's area to the tumor. 
or uh, motor area of hand and motor area of leg and its relation to the tumor. So these can also be studied, but uh, today we just talk about uh, the normal anatomy T1, T2 and flare. And uh, recently uh, the whole body DTAI is also used to detect metastasis like this. Uh, talking about artifact again, uh, like in the previous lectures, you know, a very, very subtle, small, this is a CT scan, a very small, subtle uh, metal it can cause a lot of, you know, metal artifact and this make it, uh, you know, unreadable, the MRI unreadable. So we have to be careful about these metals and dentures and uh, other things that are present near the, our, you know, magnetic field, the study field. Again, a metal artifact here, probably a clip there, or, or this is a motion artifact. The eyeball is moving, so you can see the motion artifact. And uh, another one is a motion and a ring artifact here, which will you know, decrease the quality of the MRI and uh, you will not be able to interpret it properly. Now, this is my first scan where uh, you can see this is a T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, and flared image. So you know, try to look different things by different techniques. Like T1, you, you basically look at the soft, soft tissues and T, T2, you can look again at the soft tissue, but it's pretty sensitive. So you see more actually in T2 and um, uh, flare is again, you know, good for some kind of sclerosis of some kind of small tumors, uh, something like that. So here you can see the cerebellum and uh, medulla oblongata, the fourth ventricle, the vermis, uh, another cerebellum, the nasal septum, maxillary sinus uh, on each side, and uh, the clivus, and uh, a little bit of ear, uh, the ear lobe can be seen here. And uh, here the CSF is seen black, but uh, on T2 the CSF is seen white, so you can see the fourth ventricle and the CSF within the, you know, uh, cerebellar uh, sulci can be seen like this. And again, the similar thing can be seen on uh, the flare image. As you go a little bit upward that the maxillary sinus is getting smaller, you see the skull base bone, which is not very clearly seen in MRI. Uh, CT would be a better, you know, option for looking at uh, the uh, skull base uh, bones. Again, the medulla is seen there, but then, you know, if you look at this, then you can see that the lateral medullary and the pyramid area, the, you know, med medulla can be quite well demarcated and the fourth ventricle, the ver vermis is here, the cerebellum can be seen. And a part of, you know, probably uh, this is 1911 that is going into the jugular foramen can be seen on both sides and similar picture here. And as we go up, now we can see uh, the orbit and, uh, and that is uh, the pituitary uh, gland and the dorsum cellae. And then the, this is the pons. This is the upper part of the fourth pentacle. The cerebellum is seen here, but then you can now see part of the occipital lobe and uh, a temporal lobe is seen. And here is the internal uh, carotid artery there and basilar artery here and some, you know, flow void. This is another artery. And a similar thing is seen in the flare. And you can see the uh, white and gray matter differentiation much more better in T2 weighted image and flare image. And on inside the orbit, you can see the optic nerve and then the, you know, the artery and vein within the, uh, the orbital cavity and the globe and the lens, which is blacker, maybe a little bit, you know, calcified older is and then the anterior chambers and so on and so forth. And here is the nasal septum and either side you can see the ethmoid air cells pretty clearly. And medial to the optic nerve is the medial rectus and lateral rectus 
on both sides, which is, you know, traversing towards the orbital apex, that is the orbital apex here. And again, the cella, and again, the cella. Now we move a little bit upward. Now you can see that uh, uh, you don't see the optic knob, but probably the superior rectus gyrus and uh, maybe another, you know, artery, uh, maybe the retinal artery there. And uh, this is the rectus gyrus, and this is the crista gulli, and the interhemispheric fissa is here. And um, the, uh, this is the middle cerebral artery, which you can see as a flow void within the CSF space pretty clearly in the T2 image. And this is the chiasma here. And uh, then this is the part of the optic nerve. And then, you know, optic, you know, this is posterior to the chiasmal structure. Carotid is being bifurcated here, part towards the anterior cerebral artery. Maybe the basilar is, you know, the tip of the basilar is here and then is being bifurcated there. And here you can very clearly see in the aqueduct of Sylvius, the tectal plate, the cerebral peduncle, and the uh, cistern around the uh, cerebral peduncle. This is the oncus. The temporal horn is seen on both sides. This is the hippocampus. Now more of the occiput is seen and a very little bit of cerebellum is seen here because as you go up, the tent is getting smaller and smaller in the center. And this is again, the venous structure in the posterior aspect and which is leading to the straight sinus and into the superior sagittal sinus there. And a little bit of orbit is again seen there. Now, as you move on, then you can see uh, this fork-like structure. This is the sylvian fissa, which medial to that is the insula, insular cortex. And then you have got the you know, basal ganglia and the, then the internal capsule. Uh, medial to that is the thalamus. And um, there is a connection between the two thalamus, which is the massa intermedia. And this, the posterior end of the thalamus is the pulvinar. And you can see a little bit of trigon, the posterior aspect of the lateral ventricles. The quadriseminal cistern is seen here, and maybe a little bit of pineal gland is being seen. And uh, this is uh, the fornix, where you will have, um, you know, foramen of Monroe. These two structures are the cowded nucleus and uh, uh, the septum pellucidium in the center, interhemispheric fissa, and the fox is there, and right, uh, uh, left cerebellum, right cerebellum, uh, uh, frontal lobe, uh, uh, left and right frontal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. And again, if you go up, then you can very clearly see that is the uh, fornix there, and then this is the foramen of Monroe, and this is the third ventricle, a slit-like structure there. And uh, this is the lateral ventricles. And uh, then this is the interhemispheric fissa. This is the corpus callosum. And uh, let me go, uh, let me see. Yes, this is the corpus callosum uh, anteriorly in the genu. And this is the corpus callosum posteriorly, which is the splenium. Again, the internal capsule is there. The bay part of the basal ganglia is still there, covered nucleus, and so on and so forth. And as we go up, then we can see that uh, the septum pellucidium, which separate right and left ventricle, is in the midline here. And this is the you know, lateral ventricle, the main you know, body of the lateral ventricle, the horn of the lateral ventricle, the anterior horn, the posterior part. And uh, the sulci and gyri, you compare from right to left and see if there is too many gyri or too less gyri on one side. Most of the time, these two structures should be similar. And if you look at this here or in the flare image, then you can see that is the choroid plexus, which is at the base of the lateral ventricle. 
And here you can see the gray and white matter differentiation is much, much clearer than in T1 weighted image. Now, as you go up, then you see in that superiorsital sinus anteriorly, superiorsital sinus posteriorly. This is the coronal suture of the bone, uh, which is a landmark we, we commonly use during surgery. So you need to identify that over here. And this is the fox cerebri, and then the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. Same thing here, again, the gray matter and white matter is well differentiated and you know, very symmetrical on both sides. And uh, as we go a little bit up, then you can see that the sulci is, and gyri are more you know, prominent here. Uh, also in the hemisphere, it's getting more and more prominent. This is, uh, uh, you know, this, this where somewhere is the central surface, which you can see in the next uh, image. So now you can see probably that's the central surface. To see that, you have to look one above and see that it is complete up to the uh, fox. Then you know this is the central surface. So precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus. So you can move a little bit you know, up and down and determine. And uh, again, uh, you can see the surface of the brain uh, very clearly like this. And again, the center circus is pretty clear now. And uh, the convolutions of the gyra and soci are pretty clear. Now on the sagittal image, now you have to, you know, you have to imagine the actual image and then try to reconstruct the same thing on sagittal. This is from lateral to medial. And as you go here, you can see that this is the sylvian fissa, the temporal lobe, superior, middle, and temporal gyrus. A little bit of cerebellum is seen here. The petrosal bone is looking like this. This is the frontal, frontal lobe. This is the parietal lobe. And as you go a little bit, then you can see the sylvian fissa has split, and then insular cortex is seen a little bit. The tentorium is being attached here to the you know, transverse sinus and into the petrous uh, bone. And then that is the cerebellum there. That is the coronal suture again. You know, that's also a very important landmark when we are operating. And if you are confused, then you, in the center, it is not very clear. So you can go a little bit lateral and then come down and say, okay, that's the central sulcus. And now as you go a little bit further, medially, then you can see that there's the cerebral peduncle and then a little bit of pons is seen, otherwise the cell cerebellum uh, is being seen there. And that's the occipital lobe. Now this is, uh, this is the midline, a little bit off the midline here. I'll talk about the midline structure. A little bit off the midline is the optic nerve, which is you know, coming here from the chiasma. <clears throat> and this is the cerebral peduncle the midbrain and then the pons and the medulla oblongata. And uh, here you can see that the fourth ventricle is being you know, seen like this and then the cerebellum. Uh, and then this is the tentorium. This, this phloboid is the, you know, uh, uh, this is the straight sinus, which is a confluence of the, uh, from the vein of Galen. And then this is the foramen of magnum. This is the opening of the foramen of magnum from here to here, sorry. And then, uh, you know, almost the tonsil is almost at the level of the foramen of magnum. It, if it is, goes beyond that, then we call it tonsillar herniation. And, um, you know, this is C1, R, C2, uh, C3, C4, and so forth. We don't talk about the, uh, you know, spinal MRI. I'll talk about it in other you know, presentation. And this is the spinoid sinus, which is pretty big on this patient. And this is the pituitary fossa. And that is the mammillary body, the floor of the fourth ventricle where you do the third ventriculostomy. And that is the infundibular recess from where the pituitary stalks come. And you know, not very clearly seen here, there, then that's the pituitary gland. And the white one on the posterior aspect is uh, the, posterior pituitary gland, uh, which because of the ADS anterior diuretic, anti-diuretic hormone, it looks white on plain 
uh, MRI and in diabetes insipidus, you do not see that signal, you know, and then this will not look like this bright, uh, like this. And this is the aqueduct of Silvius. This is foramen of Magendi, the central, and this is the quadriseminal system. This is the pineal gland. There is the corpus callosum. Uh, and this is the fornix, which is uh, part of the limbic system. And this is um, massa intermedia, the connection between the third two thalamus, where some people have smaller massa intermedia, some have bigger. And this is the third ventricle where you, you know, place the, uh, you do a third ventriculostomy, you come like this. And, uh, and that's it. And then this is the uh, uh, cingulate gyrus. This is the cingulate gyrus here. Sorry, and then and this is uh, the frontal sinus, nasal septum, nasal bone, tongues, nasopharynx, oropharynx. You, this is the uh, uh, this is the uvula, and uh, this is the esophagus and tragus, which is just starting there. And now the coronal suture, the coronal image. This is the orbit, right and left. This. This you are looking, the patient is looking toward you. So right and left, this is T2 only. And the mesial septum, you know, right and left nostrils, axillary sinus and the frontal bones. And as you go a little bit backward, then you can notice that medial, inferior and superior oblique, you know, muscles there. And then the crista gully is here and the pots which is attached with the suprasciatal sinus, right and left frontal lobes. And you, you should notice that the frontal lobe goes way down. Not, it's not like this, but it goes way down into the, uh, into the olfactory groove, you know. And then if you go a little bit posterior, then you can see that this is the optic nerve, the CSF cleft around the optic nerve, and if there's ICP raised, the CSF pressure is dry, raised, and then you see papilledema, the intraocular muscles. There's a lot of fat, so you can see a fat signal there. A turbinates, inferior middle turbinates, the uh, maxillary sinuses, ethmoid sinuses, the tongue is seen here. And again, a part of Kista Gully, the fox and the brain structures. And as you go backward, then you see the same structure, but then you start seeing the ventricle here, the anterior tip of the ventricle, the temporal anterior tip of the temporal horn is seen here. And as you go backward, you can see the sylvian fissa more clearly. This is the sphenoid wing, and above which is the frontal lobe, below which is the temporal lobe. Now the sphenoid wing is no more there, and there is sylvian fissa, and this is the carotid artery. And this is, uh, again, the carotid artery, middle cerebral artery, part of anterior cerebral artery. And this is the internal cerebral artery. <coughs> and this is right and left uh, uh, lateral ventricles, the septum pellucidium, corpus callosum, and the interhemispheric fissure, and the fox cerebri. And these phloboids are middle part of middle cerebral arteries. And this horizontal structure here is the uh, chiasma. And then you can see anterior cerebral artery above this A1 section, uh, anterior cerebral artery. And then again, the septum pellucidium and, uh, and then the caudate nucleus on both sides and cingulate gyrus and the temporal lobe, uh, part of frontal lobe. Now, if you move further backward, then you can notice that now you can see a structure here, uh, which is, you know, lateral. Uh, so this is, uh, if you are confused, you just go there and see what is that. This is the hippocampus. So superior medial to the hippocampus is the amygdala. So that is the amygdala. This is the uncle structure, uncle 
uh, structure here. That's the uncus, which herniates when you have uncle herniation. And that's the temporal horn and then part of, you know, parahippocampal gyrus. And hippocampus is here, hippocampus is here. And temporal lobe, superior middle and inferior temporal lobe, the, you know, temporal, temporal horn or lateral ventricle. Again, the fornix is the, seen here. This middle structure here is the uh, third ventricle, the sylvian fissa, insular cortex, and then the parietal lobes. And here you can see a vessels, which is the vertebral basilar artery. Here you can see very nicely both vertebral artery joining, just climbing on the phones and becoming a basilar artery and then dividing. And then here you can see on both sides, very symmetrically seen, uh, take an MRI, you can see cochlea in the internal uh, ear structure. This is the cochlea on right and left. So now as you go in, then you can see that uh, the pons is better seen now, the hippocampus, uh, the body of the hippocampus is being seen. And then, you know, probably this is the subthalamic nucleus, the basal ganglia is there. That's the red nucleus, the pons, the part of the cerebellum is being seen now. And uh, then you can see that uh, there is uh, the nerve that is coming out into the internal auditory meatus. So this is the 7-8 complex. And these are the semicircular canals, superior, lateral, and inferior semicircular canals, which you can see. And this is the medulla oblongata vertebral artery coming towards here and inferior, you know, pontomedullary junction, that's the pontomedullary junction, and this is third ventricle, lateral ventricles. Okay, and now as you go backward, now you see more of the cerebellum on each side, and, uh, you know, and then the hippocampus, almost the tail of the hippocampus you can see, and the lateral ventricle and the, in the, the septum pellucidium. And then that's the quadrigeminal system, the cerebellum, maybe the trigonal area of the lateral ventricle and occipital lobe, occipital lobe, cerebellum. So that is uh, all for today. And uh, next uh, we will talk about pathological MRI. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.